for having a conscious conversation. The mind is like a fingerprint. There's a reason why we see things differently. I say the mind is like a fingerprint. There's a reason why we see things differently because if we understand that the mind is truly like a fingerprint, then our thought process would be such that it's only natural for people to see things differently than I do, as opposed to moving with the expectation that people are supposed to see it how I see it. But if the mind is like a fingerprint and we truly understand that, then it's almost natural to expect that people will see things differently and that's the reason for the conversation now. So now I can help you understand how I see it, you help me understand how you see it. If we truly understand this, as I said, our most productive approach to interaction, we would expect that others will see things differently than how we see things. We now have the purpose for conversation. Understanding is why we speak. A conscious conversation is what we can have. There is no environment or reality that we can inhibit that will not have rules of engagement and a belief system or approach to life, whether it be with or without people in the forest or in outer space. You have to come up, we have to develop some type of belief system or approach to life. There are six basic guidelines for having a conscious conversation. These guidelines embody the foundation for McGriff's unique approach to harmonious and productive communication. Guideline number one, during a conscious conversation, understanding what the person is saying is much more important than agreement or disagreement. We do not look for agreement or disagreement. We also do not agree to disagree. It's not necessary during a conscious conversation. Either we understand or we don't understand. Um, every, people are not going to always understand us. If I'm talking calculus and they only understand addition and subtraction, they're just not going to understand. And sometimes we have to realize when people are not going to understand. And sometimes we have to also realize when we're not going to understand. Because, you know, sometimes we're not at that place. We're not ready. Guideline number two, during a conscious conversation, we try to avoid passive aggressive behavior while the speaker has the floor. This would include sarcasm, raising one's hand over and over again, making negative facial expressions associated with disagreement, and texting or toying with the smartphone while the speaker has the floor. Guideline number three, during the conscious conversation, we challenge the idea, concept, or philosophy with questions and thoughts. However, we never engage in intentionally discouraging remarks or personal attacks. Some of us are not comfortable speaking with people um, or may not be as verbally and intellectually equipped to explain and present our ideas as others may be. For this reason, the cynical listeners may sometimes digress to ask additional difficult questions, exploiting verbal weaknesses and hurling insults and personal attacks especially if the speaker is trying to share a perspective that differs from those who are listening. So we, we, we avoid personal attacks and intentionally discouraging remarks when the speaker has the floor. Guideline number four. During a conscious conversation, is more, if more than one person is speaking at a time, we declare that behavior as fighting and we do not want fights. We desire understanding. Traditionally, many of us are accustomed to cutting each other off and interrupting one another during a conversation. This just may be the greatest challenge for most people who are trying to have a conscious conversation. We do have a lot of wonderful reasons for cutting each other off. And the most classic one is, I don't mean to cut you off, but. <laughs> well, no, you do mean to, because you just did it. So, um, yeah, so. Guideline number five. Five and six are kind of challenging. During a conscious conversation, we never announce that someone is wrong. We're not having a conversation to figure out who's right or wrong, and we're not in a traditional classroom. So it's okay during a conscious conversation for this. Um, yeah, so it's okay during a conscious conversation for the speaker and those listening not to worry about being right or wrong. Guideline number six during a conscious conversation, everyone is right, no one is wrong. The only relevant history that we bring to a conversation is our own, and it is our, our truth. When we come to a conversation with our mindset already understanding that everyone is right, we have no reason to try and convince anyone of anything. We share our limited understanding associated with our truth and allow others to do the same. So um, 
everyone is right. No one is wrong. Even to the extent, uh, even to the extent that if I say, if I say two plus two is four, and somebody comes behind me and says, two plus two is five, in a conscious conversation, we're both right. The goal is to find out how I got four and how they got five. And even if we don't understand how they got five, it's still OK, because that's their truth. One of the questions I ask people is, two plus two is four. How do you know that? Well, when you stop and think, the only thing you can say is, this is how I was raised and taught. You know, this is that's the best, that's the best we can do. And everybody comes to the table with how they were raised and taught. And so one of the major reasons I was talking to my brother um, about this, one of the major reasons why I think harmonious and productive communication among black folks is so important is because we presently live in a situation where the rhythm of this nation and the world is conflict and confrontation. When we watch the news, people are hurling insults and fighting and yelling at each other. And then we have reality shows where there's constant conflict and confrontation. And so everywhere young people turn is conflict and conversation. So that has become the norm, whether it's adults or young people. And then the other challenge we have as what is called African Americans is that unlike when a group of Spanish people sit down to have a meeting, they all are speaking the same language, eating the same food, listening to the same music, coming from the same historical cultural background. The same, the, the people we compare ourselves to, the same with Jewish, what I call Jewish Europeans. They sit down and they come with the same understanding from a cultural standpoint. Um, my Indian brothers and sisters, literally from India, when they sit down and have a meeting, they're coming from the same cultural standards and foundation. When the so-called African Americans sit down to have a meeting, a group such as us, we're coming from, um, we're coming from our colonial conditioning. We all coming from different places of how we were conditioned. So uh, my brother might need to pray five times a day. My, my Christian brother or sister might want to open and close the meeting with a prayer. Uh, somebody else who's not a um, Christian or whatever don't, don't want to hear none of it. And so when we come to the table, we're coming from all kinds of different places. And if we, my British, I call them my British Islanders, my brothers and sisters, they like to to call a meeting at seven and then like drink tea and have a conversation till like 8.30 and then start the meeting. So, you know, we, we come from these different places and that's why it's so important, so much more important for us to focus a lot more on harmonious and productive interaction because of the challenges associated with being as quote unquote African American. So, Right now, let's, I just want to open it up. Does anybody have any questions about the, the, the guidelines? Any challenges, any thoughts? Because um, I've, I've talked to some ministers and they said, there's no way in the world everybody's right. Just, 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 nobody, you, you can't say everybody's right. And, and I say, I understand you can't, but, but I can. And I'm okay with that. I, everybody's right. And, um, and, and that's usually one of the, one of the bigger challenges uh, is the fact that coming to a conversation, just acknowledging, acknowledging that who we're talking to, they're right based on where they're coming from. Any questions or thoughts about the six guidelines? Hold on, hold on, hold on. And speak up to those are the first thing we just went over. Can yeah. I get clarity on guideline number three as far as 
an example of what that looks like when you say um, we can challenge the idea and concept. However, 